people want to sell me stuff. They want me to look at their technology. And I would say most of it looks relatively the same. It's usually a very mediocre first touch point. And then two or three days later, I, I'm like, oh, I'm in a sequence. And if I don't find the unsub or reply, uh, then I'm just going to be in sequence hell for a while. Why do I owe you a response if you just put me into a template and mass blasted me and 50,000 other people? So there's a formula for highly engaging content. People can't help but like and share it. And that's if it is insightful, relevant and actionable. So if you do that with your content, you're going to get a response and you put that into your emails. You're going to get an email that people actually want to read. They read in full and they actually want to reply. So first uh, subject line, it has to grab attention. I remember, remember every time you open your inbox, it's not just one email waiting and it's like a go, no go on that email. It's what in a wave of hundreds or thousands, depending on how disgusting your inbox is. I like to use the uh, curiosity or benefits approach. So the curiosity approach is you're specifically being a little vague to get them to go, huh, what's that all about? Click and open. So for example, one could be found it with an exclamation point. Now the key is you're like, okay, found what? Click it, open. You have to deliver on that curiosity as quickly as possible, ideally within the first two sentences. If you don't do that, it's like bait and pitch. You know what I mean? You just got me here so you could sell me and you're not delivering on it. So uh, the other one is kind of the exact opposite, which is just using benefit. So like if I was reaching out, it might be like um, three ways to spike your LinkedIn growth. If I know that he cares about that, about LinkedIn growth, I know he's going to click it because he's going to want what's on the other side of that email. Then you have to obviously deliver on that. Everyday plain language is what you should be striving for, especially in the revenue space is like phrases like, revenue success pop up. When's the last time you said revenue success? Never. We don't say it. We know what it means because you know what revenue and success means, but no one talks that way. So it's like, get more specific. If you achieve revenue success, what does that look, feel, sound like? Use that language, the things people actually say in your subject lines and emails. A lot of sellers don't have access or haven't had access to executives. And so they're like, think it's this big unknown and they must be so different. And they're speaking a different like uh, lexicon. Speaking of which, no one uses the word lexicon, which is why I just used it. And so it's like, I better make my speech more formal and like specific. But it's like, no, it just it just backfires. And it actually everyone's doing that. So be casual and approachable and you'll stand out. And that will already give you a leg up. So I do this all the time in my marketing, I'm listening to recorded sales calls. I'm hearing how people say things and I go, oh, it's just a word different than what I had, but it's exactly out of their mouthpiece. And now when I go put that into marketing at mass, people are flocking to it because they're like, oh, I've had that thought too in the exact same words. You cannot afford to write personalized emails for everybody in your you know, territory. So only do this for the, the top, the top tier. Personalized means it only works for the recipient that is reading it. If you send me a hook that's truly personalized and I read it, it should resonate with me. And if you sent the exact same thing to Tyler, for example, it would not make sense. I've actually got two good ones this week. That was perfect timing for this. Uh, the first one was the subject line was, Clary shouldn't be losing to these guys. And I went, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, I know what you're doing and I like it and I'm gonna click it. I was expecting to be redundant, but what he did is he jumped right into a story. I was just on the Clary website looking at SEO rankings. He jumped right into uh, like a real life scenario. And then he started comparing us to some competitors. So what it did though, is it grabbed my attention and propelled me to read the entire email. So now talk about your offer. Now I call things an offer. I might be emailing you for an event offer, a sales meeting offer, but the reason why is a true offer is not a demand and it is not a request. It's an offer. I'm throwing a barbecue on Sunday. We'd love to have you there if you can make it. Didn't even ask you to come. I did not ask you to come to my barbecue. I said, we'd love to have you. And I think a lot of people go, oh, that's not direct enough. You're not, you know, you're not commanding. You're not controlling. You're right. You're not. And because that's not the goal. You're going to get a lot more people to come to you and ask you when they can meet by just simply saying, hey, here's a solution. It's on the table. Seems like it might be of interest to you. Be convicted in uh, what you're solving. A lot of people aren't going to identify with that. And that's a good thing. You're pushing away people who are never going to buy anyway. And what you're doing instead is you're being a magnet and pulling in like-minded people who have this problem, who want to solve this problem. And they're going to come to you because you've now become the expert. Because if you can describe the problem better than they can, they will assume that you have the best solution. People don't want better. They want different. They want different. 
So do things that are different to stand out and then capitalize on that attention using some of the kind of conversion stuff we've been talking about.